creating a whimsical pattern like this involves a few tricks and we're going to explore those in this video. So I'm going to start with a new file and my document is going to be 200 pixels by 200 pixels in size. It has a white background. I'll click create. We're going to start with a shape. So I'm going to the shape tools here. I'm selecting on rectangle. It's important to have the word shape appear in this box here. So there are three options you want shape selected. It's to have no fill at all and it's to have a stroke of some color. You can choose the color to use. I'm using a four pixel stroke and if I click here, you can see that I'm using a solid stroke, but also that the alignment is over the edge of the shape. It's sort of centered over the edge of the shape. This is going to result in a slightly neater pattern going forward. So just make sure that those options are what you're seeing there. So we're going to keep an eye on the layers palette here as we go. So I'm going to click on the rectangle shape, which is all set up now. I'm going to click in the document and I'm going to type 200 by 200, which is the size of my document. In other words, I want a rectangle the size of my document. If I go to the move tool at this point, you'll see that I get the options here for aligning things. You're going to click on the three dots, make sure that align to reads canvas and then click on the center options here. We can close this down at this point. We're going to make sure that this rectangle layer is selected. Now what we're going to do is to copy, scale and rotate this shape, but there are some problems with Photoshop in doing so. So we're going to make an action to do the work for us. It's just going to make things a whole lot easier. So you're going to the actions panel, which you can get to by choosing window and then actions. And you're going to click here to add a new group. So it's this little folder icon. So we're going to make a group of whimsical actions. So this is our new group and I'm going to click here on the plus sign to add a new action. And this one's going to be copy, scale and rotate. You can call it whatever you like, but this is just telling me what it's going to do. So I'm going to click here on record. Now that means that everything I do now is going to be recorded, which is why I made sure that this rectangle layer was selected before I went forward, because I don't want to select it while I'm recording because that would build it into the actual recording and that's not going to work. So just make sure that you have this already selected when you come to record on your new action. So let's click on record. So what we're going to do is choose layer, new, shape layer via copy. So that gives us two of these rectangles. This topmost one we're going to rotate. So I'm choosing edit and then free transform path. Up here I'm making sure that I have the check mark selected and of these nine little boxes, the one in the very middle is selected. That's important. Then we've got width and height, which at the moment are set to 100%. In other words, there's no change to this shape. Well, I'm typing in 95 and then the percent symbol. Because this icon here is selected, that means that both of these are going to be adjusted to 95%. You can see here 95% and 95%. If that was not selected, you would need to type in 95%. In other words, we're shrinking this a little bit. And then in the angle here, we're going to set that to negative three degrees. So just minus three. And then you're going to click on the check mark. And this is what you should see. At this point, we want to stop recording. So we're going over here to the actions palette and this little square button here, you're going to click that because it's stop playing slash recording. So now we're not recording anything. But what we want to do is to do that action over again. So let's just click on copy, scale and rotate and click the play button. So just click on play. And then if we keep clicking on play, you'll see that the shape is rotating and shrinking each time and we're getting a new copy of the shape layer. Now we need to do this a lot of times and so we could just keep clicking here but we could also make an action that would play this action over and over again. So let's see how we do that. I'm just going to click here on the plus symbol and we're going to type play, copy, scale and rotate and click record. So now we're recording and what we're going to do is we're going to play this action a few times. So click on copy, scale and rotate and click play and then go back and do it again and do it about 10 times. 
So I've done it 10 times. I'm going to click on stop now. And now, because I need to do this a whole lot of other times, I'm going to click on the play, copy, scale and rotate. And it's going to do it 10 times with just one click. And I can keep doing it. Until I've got pretty much all of the document filled in. Now, at this point, we're going to see why using shapes was so valuable, because I think these lines are way too thick. But I've got 65 layers that are all shape layers. So I'm going to click on the topmost one. I'm going to select the last of the shape layers, not the background layer, but the last of the shape layers. Go to a shape tool. It doesn't matter which one. And I'm going to decrease the stroke width. So now I've got a stroke width of two pixels and I'm getting a better look. So we're able to make some changes to the shapes that we've got repeatedly entered into this document because they are shapes. We wouldn't have the same ability if we had chosen pixels. That's why I think this is important. At this point, I would save the file so that I've got this that I could use later on and I could make changes to it. For example, change the size of the stroke or change the color of it, whatever. I'm also thinking that this is still probably a little bit too thick. So let's just take this down to one pixel. Okay, so I'm going to save this and I'll come back in just a second. Now at this point to make a pattern out of it, I can just choose edit and define pattern. And I'm just going to call this whimsical rotation. And I'll click OK and let's just test it. And you can test it in any size document. Mine's 3600 by 3600 pixels. I'm going to click to add a new layer to this document. Go to my patterns panel, which of course you can get to by choosing window and then patterns. And the last of these patterns is the one I've just created. If I double click on this, I can enlarge my pattern. And you can see that we've got a really nice little rotated pattern at this point. But we can harness what work we've already done to make something a little bit more complex. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to assume that I've got a duplicate of this already. So what I'm going to do is put all of these shapes together so that they're not going to be separated. So I'm going to select all of the shapes. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose rasterize layers. So now I've lost the ability to change the color or the stroke width, which is why I saved it before I actually did this. Now all my rectangles are still selected. So I'm going to right click and choose merge layers. So now I've got one layer that has this shape on it. I'm going to double the size of my document, double its width and double its height. So I'm going to image and then I'm going to canvas size. It's important to use canvas size because that is going to enlarge the canvas, but not the existing shape. That's really important. I'm going to place the existing shape in the bottom of this now much larger document and click OK. So I've got one shape down the bottom here. I'm going to make three copies of this layer. I'm going to choose layer new, layer via copy. It's control J. So I can also just press control J. That would be command J on the Mac to duplicate it. So I've got four copies. I'm going to the move tool and I'm just going to move this shape up to the top of the document. Now you can also use these options here because they're already set to align to the canvas. So you could use those to move these around. And I've got one more here, which has to go up top here. So I'm going to send it over to this side and then up to the very top. So what we're looking at is essentially just our original pattern. So nothing has sort of changed here. If we were to save this and fill a document with it, it would look exactly like this one. So what we're going to do here is look at this top left corner and this bottom right corner. I'm going to select the top right corner. I'm going to choose Edit transform and I'm going to flip it horizontally. And then I'm going to this bottom corner one here. I'm going to do exactly the same. Edit, transform, flip horizontal. So the exact same command applied to opposing corners. Now things look very different. Now if I choose edit and define pattern, you can see that our pattern is now four elements.
I'm just going to call it whimsical times four. You can call it whatever you like. Let's go into this master document, double click on the pattern selector, and we're going to select the very last pattern. And here is a different look to our design by simply making four of our shapes instead of just one and flipping two of them, we've got this far more sophisticated design. And these are seamless repeating patterns. They're made by simply rotating and scaling a shape using 95% and minus three as our angle, and then doing that over and over again. Once you've created the actions, you've got the actions and they're just ready to do at any stage. So you could, for example, make a much larger document because you're scaling it down 95%. It's 95% of whatever it started off at. So if the shape originally was a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels, then it's going to become 95% of that. So everything has been built up so that it's not hard numbers of pixels, but in actual fact, just percentages and rotation angles. So you can use this over and over again. Now, if you're not happy with these little dots, this is what you can do. Let's go back to our pattern. I'm going to add a new layer above absolutely everything. I'm going to target the paint bucket tool and make sure that my tolerance is set to a sort of reasonable value. I think about 20% is going to be fine. Opacity is 100%. And I have checked anti-alias, contiguous, and all layers. That's really important. I need to sample my blue color. So I'm just going to use the eyedropper to sample the blue color. And then I'm just going to drop the paint into these areas. Now, if it's not going in thick enough. So if there's a slight border around it, then I'm going to increase my tolerance and see if that's a better solution. It is a little bit better. And now this would be another pattern. Go back into our test document. Anytime you make changes to a pattern, it's a really good idea to come in and just test it to make sure it looks okay. Now you can see that this one's got the little hole filled in. If any of these patterns are wrong, so if you come in here and say, okay, this pattern was wrong, it didn't line up or whatever, then you're just going to right click it and delete it. And that will remove it from the pattern collection. So you're not going to accidentally use it again in future. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.